Okay, how y'all doing today? How are you doing today? I am your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, the best film writer and director in St. Louis Facts, award-winning published author, actor, journalist, actor, business owner, Lacey G. Soldier Turner. And today we have a special guest, man. We have, to me, one of the most greatest phenomenal actresses to ever walk the face of the earth. She's a, a phenomenal writer, a film producer, great author, podcaster we got the amazing wonderful phenomenal cherry johnson welcome to the platform hi honey thank you for having me oh man thank you uh like i was telling you before we, we recorded i grew up on you you know uh you've just been one of my favorite my favorite people so i'm glad to just have you on the platform this is like a dream come true get to meet my superstar people Oh, well, thank you so much for growing up with me. <laughs> I appreciate it. A lifelong homie. I'm just getting to know. <laughs> so uh, my first question, you know, I want to start from the beginning. Where were you born and raised and how was your upbringing as a child? I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was raised by a single mama. My grandfather was extremely active in my life and so were my uncles. I grew up really in a house full of boys. Yeah, so you was the uh, so they protected you, <laughs> like still protecting me. <laughs> they said, "Don't mess with my sister." Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you, how did you get the role? And you know, my favorite show, one of my favorite show, growing up, Punky Brewster. You know, with Soleil Moon Fry. Uh, how did that come about? Thank you. So my uncle actually created Punky Brewster, and he thought it was cool to use my name because what other name is going to go with Punky or <laughs> Cherry? But he had no intention on me playing Cherry. <laughs> and he gave me the script and he said, Boots, tell me what you think about it. Growing up, I was a little girl. I never matched my clothes. I had a golden retriever. So part of the elements in the script were, you know, for me, he used me as his muse. And I read it and I fell in love with it. And I was like, so when do we go to work? And he was like, oh, uncle's going to work, honey. But you, you're going to school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? It's my name. How is somebody else going to play me? So I convinced his then wife, who's my mother's sister, to take me on the audition. And she did it. And she took me on one and one turned into two and two turned into seven. <laughs> and after seven, the president of NBC said, Dude, give your niece the job. <laughs> and so my uncle called me in his office and gave me a lollipop because I used to love me some suckers. <laughs> and it was red, it was cherry, of course. Okay. And um, I sat in the chair across from him. I didn't know what he was going to say, but he said, hey, babe, you got the job. And I told him, I know. <laughs> In my head, it never was not mine. Mm -hmm. He was like, I manifest this. This is my job. Well, like, it makes sense, right? Yes. So you didn't have no acting ability, no, no classes, none of that. You just went in. I was a little girl in the middle of eight boys. I asked <laughs> all the time to get out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so did you become uh, great friends with, you know, the characters, the rest of the people in there? Oh, uh, Soleil Moonfry and I actually met on the first audition and we sat in the chair and we were drawing together. And so we became fast friends. I got the job six months, I believe, after we moved from Pittsburgh to California. And so she was my first California friend. And then Amy Foster, of course, who played Margot. Uh, we're like the three musketeers still. So what was it like on set, though, you know, um, just experiencing that for the first time? <laughs> it set me up. Like, I think <laughs> that's never good things, but it set me up to think that like, acting was wonderful and it was going to be like the greatest place because literally we did, we played our pogo stick, you know, like right until they said action. And then we had wonderful, a wonderful stage manager who literally would grab the pogo stick and be like, go stand on your spots. And then the second they said, cut, he'd hand us our pogo stick back. Mm. Or he'd be tossing the ball back and forth to us. So it was like a big game to me. I didn't even realize I was working. <laughs> he said, this is fine. Yeah, I thought I was it. I thought I was, you know, I knew I went to work. I knew that my uncle was there. My mom was there. My other uncle worked in the office. Susie Garrett became my surrogate grandmother because then my biological grandmother was still in Pittsburgh and I was grandma's baby. So my grandma was at work with me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was just having a great time. Um, 
from wardrobe to the producers, like you could come downstairs and the producers would be playing jacks with me and Soleil on the floor. Wow, that's crazy. So it was an amazing experience. Was you sad when it ended? I was too young to know. Okay, so you were just like, oh, on to the... <laughs> yeah, I was like 12. You know, I got the job when I was six. It ended when I was around 12. And I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't... I didn't know what famous was till I was 30. Wow, for real. So when yeah. you so when you was at the age, people were coming up, up to you like outside and da, da, da. I knew we were popular, okay. right? Okay. But as a kid, like you walk into Chuck E. Cheese and other people are like, hey, are you the girl from Piper Bruce? I'm like, yeah, I want to go play in the balls. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid. Exactly. So I thought I had friends everywhere. Okay, so uh, I know after that you did Family Matters. You know, you was Laura's best friend, Maxine. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you get that job and how was that experience? Um, that job, I actually auditioned a couple times. The first time I went in, they called my agent and they said, we like her, but she has braces and we don't really want uh, the character to have braces. And so when the agent called my mom and told her, I went in the bathroom and I took pono clippers and I pulled my braces off. Wow. And I went out and I said, ask Iris at the time my <laughs> agent was Iris Burt. And I said, mommy, ask Iris if I can go back in. And my mom was pissed. I got a <laughs> she was a nurse. She was a single mom. She was like, do you know how much I have to pay for mom? You gonna go take them out? I will kick y'all, you know. And, um, she didn't beat me, but she did call the agent back and I promised her, Ma, if I get this job, I'll pay you back. I ain't never pay her back. <laughs> <laughs> My teeth is still crooked. <laughs> we the same. <laughs> still crooked, but I got the job. So, <laughs> so how was that experience compared to the Punky Booster experience? It was, um, first of all, it wasn't my show. And so I was only there sometimes. I was a reoccurring role, but I had fun because I loved Darius. Darius and I at the time had the same agent and mm -hmm. we had met a year prior at a Christmas party. And so I fell in love with Darius. He was a mixture of like my husband, <laughs> my brother and the best friend that you could ever have. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't in a relationship or anything. But anytime we like went out to the club and we got older and I didn't want people talking to me, oh, I was with my husband. <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone. Um, he's still my husband till this day. <laughs> if I need anything, he's going to get on the plane and come. Okay. And then Sean, the guy who played uh, Waldo, was on Punky Brewster. Uh -huh. And so like a couple episodes after I was there, he appeared and my homeboy was there. So it was, it was amazing. A family, a family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how was Steve Urkel on set? Uh, Leo. Depends on what day. <laughs> He's very talented. I like it, Jerry. You be you, you be keeping it real. You like, look, <laughs> I'm gonna tell the truth. This is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I probably ain't the one you want to ask. I love but it. You don't want the truth. <laughs> No, I want but the truth. I want. He's extremely talented. Nobody could have ever played that role the way he did. Okay, and I saw you did uh, some guest appearances on the Parkers, um, and you was in Days of Our Lives. Yeah, L I did Days of Our Lives listen. in between Punky and Family Matters. That is my grandmother's favorite show. Can you give Marie Sellers a shout out? <laughs> Hi, Miss Sellers. How are you? Thank you so much for watching me grow up. I appreciate you. <laughs> But no, uh, so how was it like with the Parkers and Days of Our Lives from going to that to soap operas? Days of Our Lives I did in between Punky and Family Matters. So before I got Family Matters, I was doing Days. Um, it was very different. They shot one episode a day. And so you really didn't get rehearsal time. You just kind of got like a, a walkthrough, like you're supposed to stand here, you're supposed to say this. <laughs> it was really fast paced. I loved it. Uh, I really okay. loved it. Um, and then the Parkers was fun. I mean, Hal Piss, I had known since she did Star Search. Mm -hmm. And so it was always a goal of mine to one day work with Countess. 
And I was in love with Monique. Like, who doesn't love Monique? <laughs> I know. <laughs> As mama. For, yes, for Monique to um, play my aunt, and then my aunt, my mother was a phenomenal actress who has passed on. But I was surrounded by just like, the thespians of thespians. So it was it was awesome. Plus I got to be sticky fingers girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you just met all the superstars, Cherry. <laughs> it was fun. I had a really great life. Mm, with sticky fingers, was he super cool and down to earth, you know, with sticky is Extremely sweet. Okay. And we've actually done a couple projects together. After that, we did a movie together. Mm. And I ended up being his, I think I was his girlfriend again. <laughs> I remember, but I think I was going again, but he's, was, he's very sweet. It was like they belong together. <laughs> yes. So did you ever experience the, the the child star jinx that they always talk about? What is that? Like, where, the like, where they just going, with, yeah, drugs, miserable, they okay. just lose so control. Of all. There is no child star jinx, right? Okay. You have to think, we are like little fish in a bowl. Mm -hmm. And the world is watching us. Now I gotta ask you a personal question. Mm -hmm. How many girls did you go to school with that was a stripper? Um, probably about fifty dollars flat. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> How many people did you go to school with that ended up on drugs? Uh, How many people did you go to school <laughs> with that ended up doing, you know, not the right thing? A lot of people. We're just people. Yeah, people. We're just in that fishbowl and everybody's watching. Mm -hmm. You don't know what happened to Monique from the eighth grade. <laughs> she probably working at the slip. You just don't know because you ain't been here in a while. Mm -hmm. You ain't think I knew about the slip, huh? <laughs> I knew about the slip and the $40 hollow, but that's a whole nother story. See, 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 see Cherry over here, she dropping jewels. Oh, yeah. I, I saw an episode where you found out what WAP meant. <laughs> <laughs> and you were shocked. I just didn't know. It was like the <laughs> that came out. Courtney asked me. I think I like what cool looked up something. It was like word application. Yes. <laughs> he was like, huh? Yeah. I'm not always cool. You like, know? It was like, no, look at the urban part. <laughs> right. I looked at the urban dictionary and was like, oh my God. <laughs> So, Cherry, let me ask you this. So, I saw that they, uh, you know, yeah, did the Punky Brewster reboot. How did that come about? How did that start? And was you excited to do that? Oh, my God. So, I found out about the reboot like everybody else did online. <laughs> <laughs> so, my so and my uncle didn't tell me. They, like, kept it a secret, which is probably good because I didn't tell everybody. My daddy says I'll tell on Jesus. So, <laughs> you tell on Jesus. But I went to Walmart and the second somebody said, ain't you that girl? I'd be like, then you hear we go come back. We go out <laughs> I'd have told it. So they didn't tell me. And like, they're probably like an hour of people calling me tomorrow. Are you doing a reboot? I was like, man, I ain't never heard no reboot. So <laughs> they called me. And then I was like, what? And she's like, your uncle didn't tell you? I was like, no. <laughs> and then after she hung up, my uncle called me. And I was like, are you serious, <laughs> Anything to me. My uncle was like, well, I need your agent's name because we're about to call and negotiate your deal. I was like, done. And um, yeah, it was it was the best experience of my life. I say that Punky Brewster, the original, was the best experience of my life. But coming back and getting to do another season, we only got one season. They canceled us because ain't nobody know we had a reboot. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't, didn't know. They didn't get a lot of advertising. I just started but, watching it on Peacock myself, like a few months. <laughs> I didn't and, know. And, and that's how it is. Everybody's just catching up to it now, which I think is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But to be able to go back and work on something that we had done 36 years, I think it was, it was like something like 36 yes. years prior, yeah. um, is amazing. And it was a dream come true. And I cried on set every single day, not these years. But I was definitely the set crybaby. I was sentimental. <laughs> it hit me a different way, you know, right. to sit on the same set and to sit with my best friend who I had met now 40 years prior and to be able to work with her and do it all over again. Amazing. Yes. I mean, I, I know it probably just felt like, probably gave you chills, like I'm right here, right back on the set. You it know, was surreal. It was really surreal. It's like, okay, so Punky happened 40 years ago now, right? Yeah. 
I don't really watch the show, but when I see clips or somebody posts online, I giggle because I know that it's me, but it's like looking at somebody else. <laughs> like you, like you looking at a child, like that was me. Yeah, it's like, it, that's cool. I know that's me, but huh, it looks like my daughter, you know? Yeah. So you and don't go like, back and watch it, the old? I don't. Mm. Why did why is that, I heard that a lot, like actors and everything. They don't like to watch their work. Well, you know, I do that too. So why do you think yeah, when, I started, <laughs> when I started producing, it became important to sit through editing and edit stuff? Mm -hmm. I never really realized I didn't watch myself until like the editor was saying, What did you think? And I I do this. For some reason, when I come on the screen, I naturally like look down because I never did it good enough. I always wish I got to do like one more take. Yeah. Even though the producers were satisfied with it or whatever, like it, it's never good enough. Perfectionist. That's that's how we are. But not on other people. Mm. Like I don't pick other people apart. I enjoy other people, but I don't. Yes, really me watch too. TV. I, I feel you. I'm the same. I don't watch TV though, not often. Okay. Um, so I know uh, sticking with the reboot. Uh, when you was a little. On Punky Brewster, you know, you were super boy crazy. And yeah. then the, and then the reboot, your character, you know, it represented the LGBTQ community. So were you nervous about that? Like, wonder what people was gonna think. And how did you feel when that was brought to you? I've never lived my life being nervous about what anyone's gonna think about me mm -hmm. because somebody always has an opinion, and I'm never gonna be able to please everybody ever. Um, the producers were actually nervous when they brought it to me. Uh -huh. They Soleil was like, let me call her. They didn't want Soleil to call me. They wanted to do it like very professional. And I started laughing because I, when we did the pilot, we did a pilot a year before we got picked up. Uh -huh. And they were teeter-tottering on whether I should keep my ring on because I had my personal ring on. And I was like, should I take it off? They were like, no, keep it on. We think she's in a relationship. Well, we're not sure. They weren't sure whether my relationship was going to be interracial because as a kid, I loved Alan. Um, or who my relationship was going to be with. So then they decided that they wanted her to be lesbian. When I got the phone call, uh, I was like, hey guys, what's up? The whole room got quiet because we were still like during COVID. So everything was like virtual or whatever. And I was like, look, you got to do me a favor. They were like, well, how do you feel about it? I was like, I'm all for it. But you better give me some eye candy. She's got to have some TNA and she, and the room got quiet and I was like what's wrong I said she gotta be bad you got you gotta have me a daddy I'm sorry no offense but don't give me no dyke don't give me nobody who looks <laughs> butch because men have told me since I was a little girl that you were my first crush there were not a lot of representations of us on tv at that time there was like one or two so I said those men who loved me have to now love her they gotta fantasize about the both of us and if they can't this won't work so every day when they were auditioning, they were like, oh, we think we found her. I was like, is she hot though? Is she <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, I, I, they were like pleasantly shocked, but the room was in silence. And then all of a sudden when they started talking again, they were laughing and they were like, no, we're taking notes. So it was poor Jessica, Jessica Nicole played my fiance because we did get uh, engaged at the end of the show. Um, when Jessica walked on the set, you know, we were masked and chilled. We couldn't see each other. I saw her 10 minutes before I kissed her. And when she took her mask off, one of the producers looked at me and was like, like, did I do it? I was like, you know, did, I do it? Did, I, did I hook you up? Did I hook you up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so that was the, that was the, the feel of the set. It was fun, loving, and, and amazing to come back to. How did the community? Lesbian and all. How did the, the community feel, like the comments and everything you was getting, Twitter tweets and all? I was ready for it. And I have to say, you know, our Black Christians had a problem. But the, the community has always been my supporters mm -hmm. forever. They were the first ones who invited me to a book signing when I became an author. Um, they dressed me my whole entire career. Um, and they've always welcomed me with open arms. So to know that I represented them and I represented them well makes me proud. Uh -huh. Because a lot of time you hear, well, why couldn't you get an actress who is living that lifestyle 
to play that role or, you know, they have issues, but they were like, girl, we done love you since you was little. And I was like, I done loved you too. <laughs> <laughs> I loved you too. But I, I represent the community anytime that I can. And I don't think a lot of people know that. The first solo book that I wrote, Peaches and Cream, I just did another interview, so it was sitting here. Shameless plug. But um, <laughs> Peaches is a little bye-bye. Mm. You know? And so I've never had a problem representing any. So uh, I want to talk about something serious. You know, we all see this we watch the police brutality pr police brutality uh mm -hmm. we're just saying the senseless violence with brianna taylor mike brown where i'm at i'm in st louis missouri so i saw uh back in 2013 you were racially profiled to by a sheriff's deputy in south carolina in the traffic mm -hmm. stop uh can you tell my the viewers how you felt about that what happened and what was that like i started a whole fbi investigation Unfortunately, it was dropped because we lived. <laughs> um, I was stopped by the only car in the county that did not have a camera that worked. He had no body cam that worked conveniently. I was scared like every other black person when you get pulled over and it's a problem. When he put on his leather gloves, I knew that it was all going downhill from there. And it wasn't a traffic stop, I was already stopped. Mm. I was pulled over taking pictures of cops. And when I asked him for a watch commander or a supervisor, and I told him, I said, can you please call a watch commander or a supervisor on the scene because you're making me nervous. I was told I will arrest you before I call a supervisor. And I said, arrest me for what? And he told me stealing cotton. That's crazy. He did a non-consensual search um, of all of our belongings. And he kept asking to open the trunk. And I was like, for what? There was luggage in there. But he was like, there's a dead body in there for all I know. But I was scared to let him open the trunk because I didn't want to end up in it. Yeah, and then luckily me, another officer pulled up. I'm fed ass white plate. And I was hella scared. I don't know about all the cousins, but he, he looked like a skinhead, six foot five, bald head. He ended up being, and this is why stereotypes are not good because the little cute, cop who um looked like a surfer was the mean racist one wow. and the six foot five skinhead who could have crushed me was like come here and tell me what's going on and i told him and he was like what do you have in your trunk and i was like you can look and he looked at me and he said don't let this taint how you feel about south carolina and i said if you take these handcuffs off me i never come to my <laughs> you, you ain't got to worry about me i will never spend a dollar in south carolina south carolina ain't gonna see me no more <laughs> and so he took my handcuffs off and i hugged him because i thought i was gonna die in that cotton field i know that was very scary for you uh people don't understand how it is man like what black people go through you know it's not the only time i've ever been pulled over and harassed mm -hmm. I mean, it ha I grew up in a white neighborhood, unfortunately, in Ventura County in California and um, West Lake Village <laughs> growing up in the 80s and 90s, there weren't a lot of black kids. So there was a time when every time I got in my car, I actually got pulled over by Ventura County Sheriff. So I became very um, knowledgeable, I would say, about my rights and the correct terms to use. I've never been rude, but I never felt like I was going to die. And in South Carolina, I felt like I was going to die. Okay. Man, I know that was a scary. F Have you been back to South Carolina? I ain't never going back to South Carolina. <laughs> she said, I ain't. It's like I said, I ain't. <laughs> South Carolina can kiss my ass. In fact, I had a job. I had booked a film and it worked in South Carolina. And I told him I passed. I'm not. <laughs> well, listen, nobody in St. Louis, Missouri, but not. Better I come to the Lou any day. I got some love for the Lou. There we go. St. Louis in the house. Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> so, uh, Jerry, was so was Around the World Twice? Was that your first book you wrote, or was it Peaches and Cream? No, Around the World Twice was my first book, okay, and so I hate to say, please don't buy it. Why not? Because my co-author has passed on, oh. and it's owned by another publisher who doesn't pay her children. Wow. That's so cool. maybe I will re-release it differently and then we can support it. But um, Do not my, support that. 
Yeah, my my uh, co-author, her name is Kathy Scott, who was one of my best friends in the world, um, died from cancer a couple of years ago. And so this, yeah, this is close to my heart, but please don't purchase it because I, I feel like it's only right that um, the proceeds would go to her children and they don't. Okay. So uh, how did you feel when COVID hit the pandemic? I was scared and confused and I didn't really, I didn't expect for it to last as long. Yeah, me either. <laughs> But let me tell you, I'm antisocial, so my life ain't really changed. <laughs> it's like, I'm cool anyway. <laughs> I think it was kind of great because for the first time in my life, I got to sleep in my own bed for like a year. I had never slept in my own bed. I had kind of like lived hotel, hotel. My family had traveled so much because of work and stuff. It was nice to reconnect with my family. Uh-huh. It really gave us, you know, I, I, unfortunately, a lot of families didn't make it. Yeah, it was either like a make or break situation, but for right. us, it was amazing because mommy didn't have to leave to go to work. Mm-hmm. Nobody had to like get on the plane or you know sit in a hotel room for sixteen hours while mommy went to work. So it was nice. It's still nice. I'm still living. You know, I feel the different. same way. I'm, I'm the same person. I I do a lot of my work just from home, so it ain't really changing them to me. It just got me a lot of more work that I was doing so yeah absolutely <laughs> and it was like the birth of the podcast for me yeah yes um it's been a, a, a ton of fun I got to catch up with my friends <laughs> to people you know yes. and I get to do it from my office you know where I hand her a snack and then I get off for a little while and I go make dinner and then I come back there you go it's nice so I saw that you wrote and produced your own independent film, I Do, I Did. I did. So how was that? Like, what made you want to write your own film and your acting? I was so, so. It's not the only thing that I've ever written, but it was the first. Mm-hmm. Um, I Do, I Did actually came after a bad breakup. Mm. honestly my home girl Sharice Edie and I wrote it together and we were on the phone basically clowning my ex. <laughs> you know and I, gave it, <laughs> I gave it to him so that he could correct my I put him correct my grammar and my spelling and he did and he came back and he said how much money do you think you need to do this so my ex and my next actually put their money at <laughs> and there we have it. The, uh, <laughs> was it received well no a lot of people hated it wow um, there was some reversed racism, I think, and then I gave the white girl hell. Mm. And a lot of people didn't appreciate that, but whatever. I wasn't trying to please anybody. I was entertaining myself. I just saw that, so I'm going to check it out. I saw it on the uh, All Black, I think, channel they have now. Yeah. So I'm going to go check it out. Still, I'm still going to watch it and see. Um, it, it, the, the other character was played by April Scott, who is a phenomenal actress. I'm a huge fan of hers. She was Daisy Duke in the new Daisy Duke movie, and she's a gorgeous model who I've gotten to work with so many times after. And basically, we were, you know, tit for tat over the same man who was my husband first. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Make sure y'all check that out too. Uh, So I saw you do, you also, Got Cherry's World podcast. Yeah. You know, God told me, he said, listen, you are going to be a guest on her show. I said, thank you, God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it happen, Kathy. <laughs> no, but how did, uh, what made you want to start that? And how's that going? How has that been? I didn't want to start it, if you want to know the truth. Okay. Courtney Blackman was the host of another show called um, The Cave. Behind the Cave? In the Cave? I think it was Behind the Cave. And they interviewed me and Courtney said, you know, you should really have your own podcast. I said, well, I'll tell you what, you set it up and I'll have my own podcast. (laughs) And he said, well, what would it be about? I said, I don't know. We're going to interview my friends and talk about everything that's going on in Cherry's world. (laughs) And I said it because I just be saying stuff. And he hit me after the show and he's like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, I'm serious. Let's see what's going to happen. I didn't know this man was going to really set everything up and was like, hey, so we can start recording this day and this day. Who do you have in mind to interview? And I was like, 
don't know. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean you don't know? And I said, Raz, be about to go on tour because um, B2K was about to go back on the Millennium Tour. So Raz, and I said Raz, because Raz and I were actually on the phone four o'clock in the morning while he was packing his stuff. He was like, yo, sis, you like this one? Or you like this? Like, <laughs> really like that. <laughs> and so I called Raz back and I said, yo, I know your plane don't leave yet. Can I interview you? He said, when? I said, like now? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, are you serious? I said, yeah, but he did it. Mm -hmm. And then he said, who's our next guest? And I had just talked to Orlando, uh -huh. uh, Orlando that was on Family Matters. Yeah. And I said, Orlando. He said, what do you do? So I called Orlando. I was like, hey, Orlando, <laughs> <laughs> I got a famer. <laughs> and he did it. And it, it just kept happening just like that. He was calling all your friends. You next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's so weird. It's like I would be talking to somebody. And then I, Antoine Tanner. <laughs> I, call him, I call him bro bro right that's a, you must know Antoine <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, and all that stuff. that's how I know about the slip <laughs> that's how I know about the pink slip Antoine but um a whole girl used to work up in here but anyway exactly. pink slip she know about the pink slip the <laughs> yeah for sure so I call Twans on the phone with I'm like bro I need I need I need a favor you know and they, they've done it Fredro has done my show um, I saw the actress who played Laura. Saw her. Yes, Kelly did my show. Yeah. Darius did the show. Sean did the show. So late. <laughs> so late. That's why. I'm asking the homies. Yeah. Exactly. I need a favor. Emmanuel homies. Lewis got caught up. You know. Yeah. He's like, dang, everybody. So yeah. listen. I'm, I'm going after Tevin Campbell though. I've yeah. been asking Tevin for years, and Tevin you keep ignoring. Me. <laughs> like nah, oh. I can't do it, sir. No. <laughs> You're gonna catch him one day. I think he wants. I I think that he thinks that I want to ask him obvious questions uh, that I don't care about. Yes, <laughs> it's like I don't care okay. about the person. Okay, one. Kevin, you gay? I'm gay. You know what? It's a lie. <laughs> That's not what I want to know. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, I did an interview with uh, somebody I know that's a celebrity and. He he kept on like that to be for us. He's like, well, I can't talk about that. I said, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about you. Like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> like, come on, I'll be talking about who I'm sleeping with. Yeah, I don't care about, about your personal. Person like, yes, I don't care about your personal business. That she yes, is. and I, I think well, I do care about the personal business, but yes. not like in a messy. Gossip. Yes, in the messy way. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yes in the messy way. Like I don't want the clickbait now <laughs> type of stuff. Yeah, I'm cool on all that. But yeah. like our guests have been phenomenal. Like Big Daddy Kane. Oh uh, yes. Oh man, the goat. That Judah. The goat MC, yes. Taylor uh, Braxton. Like, we we've been very blessed. You're doing your thing, Cherry. You're doing Thank your you. thing. Salute to I'm you. I'm having fun. Uh, yeah, that's what it's about, man. Life is about having fun. So uh what what do you think has been your greatest challenge on your journey? <laughs> Being a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Why you said I birth myself. <laughs> it said you to birth yourself. I didn't birth my whole face. Oh man. My whole personality and my whole self. Yeah, a handful, huh? Yes. <laughs> so uh what would you say is your greatest accomplishment? Being a mama. <laughs> yeah. I have an eight-year-old who's in sixth grade. I homeschool. She's highly gifted. And mm. she's an amazing little girl with a great heart. Mm. That's wonderful. See, she learned from you. You done did a whole bunch of amazing things. So. Thank you. Uh, um, what charities are you a part of or have you been working with any organizations? I do. I work with a human trafficking organization very closely. Definitely need that. I don't want to uh, throw its names out because it's not the safest thing. Mm -hmm. always to do but i always um work with children's charities okay. rather it's orphanages and we've been soleil and i've been doing that since punky mm -hmm. um but yeah human trafficking is something that just doesn't sit well with me yes are you working with i thought i saw someone say you were part of like a alzheimer's uh do something like that absolutely i've been on the board of alzheimer's for the past 25 years my mother um, worked in a department called Reminiscence. She's a nurse. 
and she took care of terminally ill Alzheimer's patients. For the last 15 years of her career, she was a nurse for 40 years. Wow. And because of watching my mother care for these people, it became a passion and I've gotten to work alongside of some of the scientists at Channel Islands College and learn a lot about um, the developments in Alzheimer's and how it's brought on by heavy metals and it's not an accident. It happens very early from right, some yeah. we're eating and we're injected with. And um, it's the biggest epidemic in the world that no one talks about. Especially now they always modify food and all type of stuff. Like it starts at birth. Uh, I guess it starts at birth. It's a master plan, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's crazy. But um, what advice would you have for anyone trying to get into this the the entertainment world? Period, whether it's acting, music, or whatever. I would tell everybody, honestly, like as far as an actor, you get one job out of a hundred auditions. So I hear no way more than I've ever heard. Yes. Don't be afraid to fail. I fail often. I fail daily. About every six months I fall on my face because I fall, fail so hard. <laughs> um, and I would also say, I learned something from a director. His name is Damien L. Smith. I just did a project with him called The Block. I produced it. I'm not in it. Um, he's a phenomenal writer and a phenomenal director, but he says, don't share your dreams with non-dreamers. Mm, I like that. Don't and, share your dream with non-dreamers. <laughs> yeah, because they'll try to talk you out of it. And people who are not living their dreams, there's no use in trying to seek advice from them or approval from them about your own dreams. That's real. So, Miss Cherry, my last question that I love to ask all my guests, when it is all said and done and you are long gone from this earth, mm -hmm. what is it that you want the people to know about Cherry Johnson? I just hope I made them smile. I hope that they're able to look back and to know that I loved you and that I lived my life hoping to bring joy. I like that. That's really so uh cherry let the people know where they can find you at where they can tune into your stuff or you got anything coming up going on i've always got something going on but you can find me on social media at cherry johnson 75 the 75 ain't there it ain't me and you can check out my youtube please like and subscribe to the official cherry johnson or maybe it's a little chat. I think it's a so you don't forget it. <laughs> but if you put my name in it, and then you see official in front of it, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yes, I just subscribed to your channel too. I'm like, let me subscribe to this up this. But I want to thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. It's, uh, like I said, it's a great feeling that somebody that I used to look at on TV or had a crush on as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Now, uh, see you all grown up doing your thing and I just feel thankful that you blessed me with the opportunity because you could be doing you could have said no can be doing anything yeah so I right. actually no I put some water on my hair you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here for when I come to the loo mm -hmm. we gonna go get some pizza yes and just get it take you to the slip emos <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, you know, we got the emos and the best Chinese rice up in this work. So, I this. but uh, yes, I would definitely stay in touch uh, with you too. I want to send you. I'm a writer and director also, so I want to send you some of my films that I wrote and directed. Can I get a job? Like, listen, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Can I get a job? I'm actually look. I'm actually working on a big comedy film for St. Louis. It's called Food Stamps and Wig Vouchers. Well, ain't nobody told you I'm funny as hell. Hey, so look, I'm, I'm, I'm look, I'm, I'm piling that people down. So once they once they hit me up, I'll be like, Cherry, let's get it. <laughs> let's do well, this. Once in my life, can I qualify so I can get my EBT? But they won't give me one. Food stamp and wig vouchers is coming, y'all. Storing nice storing cherry jumps. <laughs> nah, no, but thank you again. Uh, I really do appreciate this opportunity, and I'm gonna be tapped in. I'm gonna tune in to your stuff all the time. Like I watch some of your interviews already, and I just love you. Real, you're blunt. You were like, hey, look, I don't care. I'm keep it real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. 
That's why everybody don't let me speak. <laughs> keep, keep her now, keep her now. <laughs> but uh, thank you. And I'm gonna uh, let you know as soon as I drop this article also in this interview. Thank you, love. All right, thank you. And you have a good rest of a Sunday. You too. All right, bye-bye. Bye.